I'm sure most of us know about white space and negative space in graphic design, but do you get confused or lost when it comes to actually applying these things to your designs in real time? And we're going to be looking at design principle of space so we can end up with beautiful designs that wow clients. When designing something in regard to the use of space, firstly ask yourself, what is the content you're working with? What has the client given you? It's important to distinguish between macro white space and micro white space at this point. Macro white space is the large expanse areas of nothingness that exists on your design. Whereas the micro white space are the areas of smaller sections of nothingness between lines of text, paragraphs of text, and closely packed together design objects. For example, if you're working on a design where the client has given you reams and reams of text to work with, you're not going to be focusing much on macro white space, simply because you don't have much of it to work with. Your whole vision and approach for that design should then shift to focusing on using more micro white space effectively. However, you will still have elements of macro white space to consider, albeit a lot less. Now, if you find yourself in a situation on a project where you're able to work with both micro and macro white space, it's important to consider the message of the design and also the target audience. You want to find the right balance of micro and macro white space for targeted people who will be viewing it. If the design is a poster targeting mainly young business professionals who will view the design whilst briskly walking along the subway to work, you want to tip the balance towards using more macro white space. This is so your design remains easy to digest and recognizable at a first glance. Having lots of macro white space will just create emphasis and hierarchy on the focal point, making the design more noticeable. One rule of thumb that you can use is that more macro white space can suggest minimalism, modernity, and luxury. While if the balance is shifted more to micro white space, the design can be seen as more informative and serious. Things do go deeper than just macro and micro white space, however. We can enhance our designs with the use of passive white space and active white space. Passive white space refers to the micro white space that helps legibility and the aesthetics of a layout. That is, without guiding the viewer in terms of structure and viewing order. Active white space, on the other hand, relates to helping the viewer move through your designs in order and structure. If we take a look at this example of a paragraph, this design has poor use of micro white space. It's essentially just not even that legible. If we add in some passive white space, we can now read it properly and the viewer has more of a pleasant experience. But we can go further and apply active white space to control the order and the movement of the reading experience. Things are now broken down into digestible chunks, which helps the viewer move between each part of the design easily and this ensures they will remain on your design for longer periods of time. To summarize, when considering the use of space on your designs, it should always be legible whatever you're designing. Also, unless the brief specifically calls for it, you don't want the viewer to feel cramped and have a tough time navigating your design. You then need to consider the balance of micro and also macro white space that you're going to use. Things that determine this are the message of your design, the content given by the client, the target audience, and the context of the design in real life situations. Use space to enhance other principles such as hierarchy and proximity. And then lastly, consider passive and active white spaces. So the next part of today's course is gonna look at negative space, and it will show you some of the clever and hidden ways that graphic designers can use negative space in a whole host of different projects. So let's dive right into it. The power of negative space, when used correctly, can help you create logos that tell stories within stories, posters that make you question reality, and marketing that actually works. Firstly, take a look at this logo right here. Most people know it, of course. But you're likely looking at it and thinking, something's off here, something's not quite right with this logo. That's because the Harry Potter logo here has now been transformed into something called an ambigram. And it's the first cool way that we can actually use negative space as designers. Ambigram designs make use of negative space so they can be the exact same design when flipped over. This isn't just a cool trick you can add to your designs. It's actually a really neat kind of form of symmetry. 
You can literally have a ton of fun with these things and here's a quick example of how to make one. The trick is to use negative space to create lettering that has two meanings to it. So of course, let's just outline and ungroup these characters first. I'm going to try and make the F and the I resemble an upside down Y, which means I do need to get rid of the dot above the I. But yeah, it's actually quite fun playing around with these typography logos when thinking about ambigrams. It's getting back to the creative and experimental side of graphic design, which is always, always nice. So I'm just using the direct selection tool here to manipulate the anchor points on my lettering and then to extend the F here, which is also the lower part of the Y when flipped over, of course. Speaking of which, I don't actually need this Y anymore. So you can probably see where I'm going with this. And yes, this looks decent right now, but the Z's or the Z's aren't perfectly square, which makes the logo a little bit off and not perfectly matched when flipped. So I'm going to adjust one of them so it's properly perfectly square and then duplicate it over. So by using negative space in and around the F and the I, we've created the ability for a shape to be seen as a Y and also as an F and an I in one single logo. Pretty cool, huh? This next negative space technique is used by a lot of graphic designers and you can start using it right now on your designs. Take for example this here. This ultra clever design actually depicts two people and yeah, they're pretty famous people actually. And props to you if you can detect who they are in a few seconds. But this is the art of using negative space to create dual interpretation. And it's not just done for fun and for art. Take a look at this ice cream marketing design here. It's one of those illusions that once you see it, you can't unsee it, if that makes sense. Initially, I totally saw two people, but now I mainly just see the ice cream and the starry night. The art of using negative space on dual interpretation comes down to placement pretty much. For example, here is a nice hand lettering style logo for the infamous Tour de France. And we can see the sun at the end of the France lettering, just chilling. That is, until we move it up to here, and then it doubles up as part of a racing bike and the person riding it. It might actually take you quite a bit of time to get things right with this kind of design, and also it does require a creative mind to think about the design concept in the first place. But when done correctly, they simply look awesome and stay in the memories of people who view them. And as a graphic designer, being able to create something that stays in the minds of people is a hugely powerful skill to have and shouldn't be underestimated. On this channel, I often talk about the importance of getting the viewers of your graphic designs to feel something emotionally, something that links back to the brief and the research. But it can sometimes or often be really difficult to encapsulate emotion on a design. That is, until you discover the next technique based around negative space. Emotional expression when matched with negative space is a very bold and easy way to actually get an emotional response from your audience. As you can see on this logo for a charity based organization in Nigeria. Well, it's actually a deconstructed logo until that is, I move them back together where they should be. Now we have Africa in the middle, but also the little boy is looking upward, which leads to the emotion of hope. And hope is a huge part of this organization's branding. We get a warm and a hopeful emotion simply by looking at this very clever design. And then here for a vodka brand, we see the bottle in the trees, of course. But reading into the emotional side of things a little bit more, we can grasp that the design is pushing the idea that vodka is natural and clean, or at least this one is. Vodka is notoriously better the cleaner and the clearer it is. And so just look how clear and fresh the bottle looks being resembled in the gap in these trees. The emotion to the viewer here is one of appreciation of quality. Building in emotional expression mixed with negative space often incorporates storytelling into a design. Here we have three mini stories presented to us in three negative space designs. The headphones bring us to solitude and refuge from the loud and annoying aspects of life, or at least that's what it's trying to say. And by the way, this design is just awesome on so many levels, you, you must agree. And then there's this clever design that tells the story of losing one's teeth due to smoking. Hush. And that literally uses negative space being revealed around the mouth. But now it's time to take things to super creative and interesting lengths. And we're going to learn how to make clients or viewers of your designs go, ah, wow, that's super cool. 
So this technique is quite similar to dual interpretation, but it goes a little bit further. With most dual interpretation designs, the viewer will understand the meaning within one or two seconds, just like that. It's an instant recognition. But with the technique of hidden meaning negative space, it can take the viewer multiple seconds, even sometimes minutes, and then eventually they catch the meaning. It might be a cryptic logo as seen with the Toyota brand, and that's where it spells out the letters within one symbol, all because of the use of negative space. Another similar logo is the Toblerone logo that has a hidden bear in the mountains. But it doesn't have to be exclusive to logo designs. Take this poster here. What do you see hidden, if anything? Well, if I go ahead and reveal the logo at the bottom right, perhaps now things are more clear. Sometimes people will get the meaning faster than others, but if you can somehow add a hidden meaning into your design, only when the brief allows for it, of course, then your design will become elevated in the minds of your viewers. To better understand space as a graphic design topic, let's take a look at some before and after design examples to illustrate exactly what we've looked at so far today. Now I want you to focus your attention on the left hand side in the blue area. What do you think might be a problem from a technical design viewpoint when thinking about space? So if I make some small adjustments while considering micro white space, you can see how again small changes equate to a big difference. So the micro white space between each line of text and also the visual elements below has been increased to bring a more harmonic and clean design solution. And all of this is while making it easier for the reader to obtain the information. But I couldn't help myself and I had to add in some contrasting colour for this call to action button. But yeah, side by side, it's pretty obvious to see how thinking about micro white space can really improve a design. As you can see on this first design, it does look cluttered and it's pretty busy, even though there is macro white space obviously being used. Now designers sometimes will use macro white space to draw attention to something specific and give it emphasis. And so on my redesign, I have refined down the design to the bare essentials, and I've used macro white space to give importance to the logo or the icon or whatever you want to call it. And that's over on the far right. Of course, having such an open and minimal approach is not going to fit all projects and all briefs, but this is an example of how macro white space can be used. So white space can also be used to enforce and bring into being other graphic design principles. So this design here is really quite interesting because we have a focal point in the form of an illustration with a light bulb, and it's also a clever concept of the cable writing idea. There is a nice amount of macro white space surrounding the design, and things are aligned pretty neatly as well. But where is the problem, and what issue can you see in this design? Has micro white space been used well, do you think? So this is a classic instance where micro white space has been used ineffectively, which results in a poor outcome in terms of proximity. Proximity is a very valid graphic design principle that states certain elements should be grouped together if they share a relationship. So in my revision, I've brought the body text closer to the title because they are connected, and then I've left a small amount of micro white space below that group to then place the social links. The social links are still grouped within one textual content group, but this one group can be divided into two smaller groups. And this is proximity. Micro white space can also absolutely be applied to logo designs. In fact, it is one of the most crucial aspects to a logo design. So take this example here, and before you go nuts, this isn't my logo, I quickly pulled this from Freepik as a demonstration. But how has the use of white space been applied to this logo? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it okay? And what can be changed? When we edit the kerning on logo type, we are for sure considering micro white space, aren't we? That's essentially what we're doing. And this logo design is too tightly packed together in terms of kerning, and also the white space between the two lines of logo type, and also the logo icon itself just seems kind of claustrophobic. Adding in very minor adjustments can allow the logo to breathe, and things simply just look more approachable, more professional, and more effective. And just a little tip, negative space isn't white space. They are not the same thing. Negative space creates subject, form, or even meaning when two or more design objects interact with each other. In this example here, the two parts of the logo mark are creating negative space in the middle. Another prime example of negative space would be the FedEx logo with the arrow in between the two letters. So this has been a deep dive into the graphic design topic of space. 
If you wish to dive even deeper into a different design topic, just click the video on the screen. And of course, design your future today. Peace.